Hi guys, this is Amrita Anshu. And in this video, I want to do a quick demonstration, a quick show and tell of a tool that I use every day. Uh, it's PyEnf and it basically allows you to have more than one version of Python or multiple version of Python installed on your operating system and very easily switch between those versions. Uh, so I'll quickly hop on to the project page on GitHub. This is the GitHub URL for the project PyEnf. And you can search for this. This is usually the first link on the famous search engines. I use DuckDuckGo, or you can uh, I'll I'll copy the link in the description for you guys. Uh, but as you can see, it has tons of details about this project, how you install it, how it works behind the scene, and what are the basic commands and everything. Uh, but in this video, I'll basically do a quick demonstration of various commands, how I use it and how it helps me in my workflow. So first, let's talk about the installation very quickly. Um, as you can see, there are basically two ways of installing it, either using the automatic installer or the basic GitHub checkout method. Uh, almost every time I use the automatic installer method, I recommend using this method. Uh, but if you want to do things by your own hand and see what's going on behind the scene, you can use the git checkout method. In git checkout method, basically you clone the repo and then set some, uh, export some variables and uh, put the command in your path. And this installer method essentially does the same thing, but does it for you automatically. So with installer also, there are a few ways of doing it. You can either clone the repository and then execute this script by an installer. Uh, or you can simply curl this URL and pipe it to bash. So I know this is a controversial topic, piping uh, arbitrary curl code to bash because you are essentially executing the arbitrary code that's behind this URL. So if something fishy is happening, if the code behind the URL has changed or anything, then you are basically running an untrusted code, but I have been doing this for a long time and for this video, I'm just going to follow the process. Uh, so I already have PyEnv installed on my machine. So for this demonstration, I'll basically just uh, start a Docker container. I'm using the Python image and I'll just do curl bash. So as you can see, it is doing the same thing as the git checkout method. It is checking out various repositories and then doing its thing. At the end, uh, it will give you a few line of code that it will ask you to put on your bash RC file or your ZSH RC file or whatever shell you are using. Uh, cool, so I already have PyEnv Py installed, so I'll just quickly hop onto my machine and continue the demonstration over there. Cool. So now with the installation out of way, let's see how PyN works. So if we'll just type the command PyN, which will list down all the common uh, or all the commands supported by or all the options supported by PyN. Um, and in this video, I'll go over the main options or main commands that I use in my day to day workflow. So I think the, the first command that we should really discuss is PyN versions. It let you or it tells you what are the versions of Python installed on your system using PyN. Yep. So I have Python 3.6.9.3.8.3 and the system Python installed. Uh, and this asterisk symbol basically signifies that Python 3.8.3 is the currently active Python version. We can test that uh, if I'll just do Python I get a REPL for Python 3.8.3. So Python 3.8.3 is the currently active version of Python. What if I have to install a new version of Python? Uh, let's say for a project, I want to install PyN or Python 2.7. So I, I can simply do PyN install. Uh, first I can do PyN install hyphen L and I'll pipe it to less. So it will list down a complete list of Python versions that you can install using PyEnv. So as you can see, it goes all the way back to Python 2.1.3 and all the versions of Python 2.7 and then all the versions of Python 3. And then you can also install Python from Anaconda, 
or you can install iron python which is the dot net um, version of python J jython which is the java runtime version of python which runs on jvm micro python which is the embedded python so i i have never used any other python other than the regular c python but you have plenty of choices so you can use this tool regardless of what flavor of python you use uh, so for this video i'm just going to install python 2.7 dot what's the latest here 1 8 let's do 1 8 yep so when you type this command it goes and downloads the source code for python from python website and then it installs python so installing python from source code means it is going to unpack this tarball and then compile the source code and then install that executable on your machine so it takes good five to ten minutes on my machine it depends upon the specs of your system but as you can see <coughs> all four cores on my machine are at hundred percent so it's a taxing process uh, so I'll, I'll come back uh, to this video once the python is installed hi guys so as you can see now python 2.7.18 is installed on my machine and i can verify that using python versions yep so as it says python 2.7.18 is now available on my machine uh, that's good so now we have all these versions of python installed how do i switch between these versions actually this is one of the favorite thing about the Python tool for me it, it allows you to switch between multiple versions of Python in a very flexible manner so there are three main ways of doing it uh, first way is Python global so this basically sets the global version of Python so if you bring up any shell and if you do Python it takes you to the global version so you are basically setting the python version system wide for your user or user wide you can say um, so let's try to change the ver global version of python to python 369 cool so now if i'll do python here it takes me to python 369 if i'll do which python it is pointing to a shim in in python in pyen directory that's fine that's internal detail but on a different shell let me open up a different shell here uh, if i'll do python it still takes me to python 369 so the python version is set uh, at a user wide level now that's great uh, that was the first method but now let's say for this particular shell on, on the left side, I want to change the version to a different version. So I'm running a ad hoc command and I want to run that with a different version of Python, but I don't want to switch uh, Python for all the shells or, or I don't want to change that user wide. I, I just want to do that on this particular shell session. I can do py and shell. Let's switch to Python 3.8 here, 383. Cool. Uh, if I do Python version, it will tell me that the Python version is 3.8.3 and it has been set using this environment variable. I'll show you what this means. Uh, but for now, if I will do Python, yep, in this shell, it invokes Python 3.8.3. But if I move back to the other shell and if I will do Python, it still takes me to the global Python, which is Python 3.6.9. That's good. Uh, so let's talk about how Python shell works. So essentially, it sets an environment variable uh, called as Python version. Yep, Python version is 3.8.3 in this shell. That's why. It, that's how Python knows which version of Python to invoke, right? I can, in fact, I'm not sure if it's a recommended manner, but I can in fact change the version of python python by changing the value of this environment variable so i'll just change it to system let's see if it invokes the system python now so if i'll do python version it says yeah system is the active version and if i'll just do python it will take me to python 2.7.16 which is the system python 
on this Debian 10 machine. Nice. So now we have discussed two approaches of uh, changing Python version using PyEnv, and now is my favorite part. So if I'll go to see a temporary directory, let's say this is a project I'm working on just for fun. Let's even initialize a Git repo and then uh, this is a test. Just create a test file here so that it doesn't look empty and looks like a project. Uh, so right now, if I'll do Python version, the global Python, which is Python 3.6.9, is still active here, as expected. Uh, but let's say this is a ancient project, and for some reason, I have to use Python 2 in order to test this project, right? So for this particular project only, I want to activate Python 2, right? So let's show you how, how this is done. So if I do Python local and let's say Python version 2.7.18, um, this would have created a file called as .python version. And if I'll see the content of this file, it's just the version number, Python 2.7.18. But what that means is, if I'll do Py and version now, I'm using Python 2.7.18. If I'll invoke a REPL, sorry, wrong shell, uh, it opens Python 2.7.18. And on my another or my other shell, it still takes me to the global Python, which is 3.6.9. That's nice. So for this particular project itself, um, or this particular directory, uh, I have set the version of Python to be 2.7.18. So if I'll switch back to any other directory, and if I'll do Python, I still go to the global Python, which is 3.6.9. We can confirm that, yep. But if I'll switch back to my Python 2 project directory, uh, if I'll do Python version, I'm again on Python 2.7.18. So that's really nice. So using this method, you can essentially pick a version of Python for your particular project. So you don't have to set the Python version uh, system-wide or shell-wide. You just switch to that directory without thinking anything and it automatically picks the right version for you. So that's really nice. Um, so those were the three ways of how Python allows you to switch between different versions of Python. Um, now I just quickly want to talk about some of the advantages of this process. So some advantages are very clear that you can have multiple versions of Python installed. Uh, that's good. But why, why would you want to have multiple versions of Python on your machine? Uh, so I'll, I'll talk about this particular uh, operating system I'm using. So it's Debian 10. And by default, if you'll just install uh, Python using this command, it will install Python 2. Uh, let me switch to system. So 2.7.16, which is a old version of, so Python 2, first of all, is uh, end of life now. There is no good reason why we would still be using Python 2 anyways. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Debian for compatibility reason it still ships with Python 2 as the default version. So we want a new version of Python anyways. Um, so you can do that through the operating system repository. Uh, yeah, so you can do sudo apt install Python 3. I think I'll already have it. Um, so if I'll do Python 3, it takes me to Python 3.7.3, .3, which is a new version of Python, but this is not the latest version of Python. So that's where PyEnv uh, comes into picture for me. So if I want to test my code against Python 3.8.3, .3, or if even if I want to test out some of the uh, features which are in the upcoming version of Python, I can also do that. So if I'll do Python install, Python install hyphen L, uh, if I'll do 3.9, yeah. So you can see here that we have Python version 3.8.3, but then which is the current latest version, then we also have Python 3.9 alpha, 3.9 dev, and even 3.10 dev as well. So I can use this tool to test the new features which are coming in new version of Python. 
similarly if if i am like in in my day job i i work on tools which are only compatible with python 3.6.x so latest version of python 3.6 i can i use pyn to basically install python 3.6 for me and then yeah uh, so th that's great that's how you can use pyn to juggle between multiple versions of python So now the second big advantage of Pyon for me is that it allows me to install uh, versions of Python, different versions of Python at my user level. And then I can install whatever I want from pip without polluting my system Python. Uh, so Linux and maybe Mac OS as well, they, they all ship with a version of Python pre-installed because the operating system depends upon it. Various functionality of the operating system relies on uh, the availability of system Python. Uh, and it's not a good idea of installing third party pip packages to the system level Python. Uh, first, because it can conflict with your uh, existing libraries and in, in some scenarios might even break your system Python installation and hence a result some OS functionality. And second, uh, when you are installing stuff at the OS level on system Python uh, using sudo, you, you are basically uh, trusting a third party code uh, to tamper with your OS level thing. So it can impact, uh, if there is some malicious code there, uh, it's it's not a good idea to install things uh, at the OS level because it could impact your OS functionality or could even pose a security threat as well. So that's where PyEnv comes into picture. You can have uh, multiple version of Python installed. So this system is the system Python I was talking about. So this is, we shouldn't play directly with the system Python or avoid using it as much as possible. Pyon allows us to easily switch to any of the other Python versions and that's where we should install our stuff and bonus thing we don't even need sudo access to install new packages on on the versions of Python installed by Python whereas on system Python you will need sudo access to do that um, so those were the two main advantages of why I use Python when now it's an integral part of my workflow uh, and thank thanks to the devs of the tool and yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful tool uh, thanks guys so in in the next video i'll like to talk about uh, how i manage my virtual environments python virtual environments using pyenv and how it helps me simplify that part of my workflow as well uh, thanks guys and see you next time bye